My name is Charles Ennis. Some people may know me by my pen name, Kerr Cahoolan. I've written 24 books on spirituality, warrior philosophy, and astronomy. I've been on this spiritual path for 48 years, and I've felt very connected to the Earth. But it wasn't until I got behind the eyepiece of a telescope and started looking up that I really saw the full extent of this place where I live and, and where it fits in the universe and really understood the connections behind everything. You can't respect this until you can see it. When I retired, I moved to Seashelt, British Columbia and helped to build the observatory, which is now the center of my passion. Our world is part of a solar system and a galaxy and a universe. If we really want to connect to the Earth, we have to look up and out and see it all. Yep, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we are. We need to be stewards, and we can't do that if we can't see our place. I was in Air Cadets when I got my first telescope. I went on to military college and then a police career. You spend all of your time walking the back lanes of the skids looking up at the sky, of what little of the sky you can see, wishing that you were somewhere else actually seeing it. Light pollution has replaced this galaxy of stars overhead with a galaxy of artificial lights down below. Two-thirds of the world's population, because of light pollution, can't see the sky. It's just gone. The sky that inspired our ancestors that they used to populate their mythology and do divination and do navigation and all of those things, it's gone. People can see maybe a few first-magnitude stars in the moons between high-rise buildings of steel and glass. Communities use an excess of artificial light at night creating an unhealthy and unsafe environment. We can save money, light our streets, and see our sky by choosing full cutoff light fixtures. 549 men and women have been to space and have looked back at the Earth against the background of the solar system and our galaxy and the universe beyond it. And they've all experienced this thing they call the overview effect where they suddenly have a new perception and new respect for the environment. Amateur astronomers can give you the next best thing through the eyepiece of a telescope, the underview effect. Oh, I forgot my Saturn now. <laughs> you can really see the rings. You can really see the rings, yeah. Yeah, wow. well, those rings It'll have be, names, The map they? will be planets, once it, rings. Cool, once they, <laughs> well, moons, this could be There's five. Moons. You'll be able to see five moons when it gets a little darker. There's thousands of stars. Oh yeah. So you can already see stars in this. When you look in the eyepiece, you realize this is the real thing. It was the first time I saw Saturn, actually. Tell me about that. Uh, it was wonderful. It was low in the sky. We only had a limited window of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And my friend and I set up a scope 
And when I found it and I in, in the eyepiece, I literally broke down in tears. It was beautiful. I had just this golden orb with this wonderful ring around it. It, it's one thing to see it in a picture, but then when you, when you know you're looking at it real time and it's within our solar system, it was amazing. I've seen so many amazing things out here. It's just every time it's, it's something different, it's always a treat. It's always a delight in just looking at the night sky. You never know what one's going to see. Last night, for example, I saw the ISS pass by twice. About seven to nine meteors passed over, and it's all you have to do is look up. Nobody thinks to look up. It's amazing how people have gotten accustomed to the idea that there's nothing up there, so why even bother looking? 100 billion stars in our galaxy. It's one. For, for every single grain of sand on the face of the Earth, there's 10,000 stars. In the observable universe, there are 100 billion galaxies, each with between 100 and 1,000 billion stars. The planets are Roman. Constellations are Greek. All the names of the stars are Islamic, are Moorish. Overlapping cultures, civilizations. You know, we look at what the Chinese have done over the years. Curry. Looking at the same sky, All no same matter where sky. we're at. Yeah, interpreting things slightly different. Lean back, look up the stars, and think how many thousands of people over ten thousands of years stared up at those same stars mm -hmm. you know back then they didn't really know what they were understanding of what they were now we have a better understanding i got into astronomy when i was a kid i had been up to that point reading a lot of science fiction and dreaming of having a spaceship and going up into the sky and exploring and it occurred to me that i'm on a spaceship Spaceship Earth, and it's going 28,000 kilometers per hour through space, and all I have to do to explore is look up. And it's as much of a passion for me to look in the eyepiece and see stuff for myself and explore the skies as it is to help others to do it. You know, their passion kind of fuels mine. Everybody out there want to see the moon? The moon, Saturn, and Mars are up there right now. You can't see Saturn or Mars yet with your naked eye because, well, maybe you can, you're younger than me, but I can't. And that's because they're not bright enough to defeat yeah. the light from the sun. But I can see them with this. Well, what we're going to do first is look at the moon. As soon as it finishes fixing, they're fixed. Perfect. Being born in 1960 was kind of the beginning of this, you know, this, the real major space race with the U.S. space program. So everything was space. Nothing was really about astronomy you know you're used to seeing all the rockets blasting off all the tests and then you know you know building all the models of the rockets the command modules lunar landers but then looking at the moon that's what really did it. i had binoculars so i went out and i looked at the moon and I can't believe I had never looked at the moon before with binoculars. And that, it was completely struck the Mare Crisium on the edge of the moon. Just blew me away. My first light with my other telescope was Saturn. And I actually screamed. <laughs> Didn't mean to, but I screamed when I saw it through the telescope. And I've just been discovering more and more just amazing objects out there. What? And once I find them, I want everybody else to find them. So I do a lot of outreach. Yeah, so many of us find that you get as much of a charge out of showing other people as... I've shown a woman probably her last look at stars because her eyes were failing. Mm -hmm. And I've shown little kids their first look at the moon and it's just so thrilling. Hit enter. 
There it goes. Yeah. That's focus there. Okay. Oh wow. That's, that's probably the biggest I've seen, seen the moon that moon. close. Yeah. Uh, so this is probably the biggest telescope uh, I've seen so far, and you might not see one this big for a little bit. <laughs> like a pretty decently sized crater. And a few other smaller ones. Mm-hmm. See the mountains? But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, there's a lot of them over to the right. Well, a lot of people don't think you can see anything yet because it's not dark. Wow. Is that the edge? That is the Terminator, yeah. It was amazing. It was just amazing, like you're just flying over it. But it's all bumpy on the edge. Oh, yeah because there is craters and mountain peaks and all kinds of stuff, and you get the shadows. You guys got lucky, because we're a pretty cool crowd. <laughs> <laughs> got a meteor shower. We got the ISS flying over. Tons of stuff. I, I'm really excited. <laughs> Most people are older folks in this hobby, but like, they're really awesome because when you share a passion with somebody and you get to talk about it, it's just really fun. <laughs> and it's very positive. Is that yeah. it? Yes. Okay. Bro? Yes. Where'd it go? Yeah, it's still there. That's my there it is. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty close for me. It looks like like a a painting, like a picture, like you see, like it's it's like it's not there, but it is, like it's crazy. Like as in just the look of it, it's really cool. I'm a noob for this. I haven't got a telescope yet. I'm coming to learn, so I wanted to to be around people that actually know what they're talking about and what to look for, what to get for equipment, and to have an opportunity to uh, absorb their knowledge. Yeah, I just saw a little sliver of it, just for a second. Okay, it come back. So when it's at the far end of its orbit, like a year Yeah, so that was the first opportunity for me to see Saturn through a telescope. I've, um, been able to see Mars, but I haven't had a chance to see any of the planets like, like Saturn. So that's pretty amazing. <laughs> the, an ordinary person that doesn't have a lot of education in astronomy can just come out and, uh, you know, do some cosmological nature bathing. That's what I call it. It's just, we're out in the fresh air and looking at the beautiful sky and uh, looking at all these objects. So it's, it's really nice. It's just so funny sometimes, the people that you don't expect to get the wow factor from for set up down in the parking lot. People, well, no, that, it, it, that can't be Saturn there. And you guys have taped a picture inside the telescope and just be totally blown away. And this was just a person that you would have never, ever, you know, imagined that, that could get that kind of a reaction and just, just dumbfounded. Come over here, there's a double cluster. Yeah. That's a good one. And just over, just up, up, up Perseus. Yeah, up Perseus, yeah. Just star hop. Yeah, am I right? Yeah, it, it's just starting to rise, but it's so low. Yeah, With a small telescope traffic. and a clear sky, free of artificial light, you're looking into a time machine, seeing light that started on its way to you when your ancestors were here on Earth, a sky that will inspire you as it did them. <laughs>